it's Bella and today's video is going to be a disappointing products slash products that I regret buying video. Um, I've never done one of these before so I have quite a few products that I want to talk about in this one. Um, but basically these are just products that didn't work for me, products that I just personally didn't like. So I do want to put a little disclaimer out there that I really, really do not want to offend anyone when I say that I don't like these products. Um, some products are going to work differently for different people, so something that I may love, you guys may hate, or something that you guys may love might personally not work for me. It's kind of like skincare. You know how some things can like give certain people reactions and then it works beautifully on other people? I mean, it's kind of a bad analogy, but you know what I'm trying to get at. I just don't want to offend anyone because these just personally didn't work for my skin and everyone has different skin types, skin tones, preferences, all of that kind of stuff. So please don't be offended. And I also just want to mention that me saying that I dislike these products does not mean that I hate these brands. I actually love every single brand that I'm about to mention. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's get started. So the first product that I want to talk about <laughs> um, has been so hyped. I actually wanted to talk about this a very long time ago when it was like a really really big deal but it's my little parmesan cheese. This is the RCMA No Color Powder and this became such a huge deal and I was so excited about it because it's like $10 in comparison to my Laura Messier which is like $60. It is amazing and you get so much product in here. It's completely white which means it's going to leave your under eyes totally bright. So I was all for this product. This is actually the second one that I've purchased because I purchased the first one and I really hated it. So I chucked it out and then I got a new one because I was like, okay, maybe I did something wrong. I'm going to give it another chance. So I bought this one and it's still still not doing it for me. My problem with this one is that it separates really really badly on my skin. It separates, it gets patchy and it gets flaky and it doesn't it, it doesn't take long to do that. Like literally immediately this product will be patchy on my face. Like it doesn't apply evenly to my face, my under eyes, my eyes. I tried setting my whole face with it and Oh my gosh, I looked like a train wreck. I had to take all of my makeup off and completely redo it because I don't know why this just is not compatible with my skin and I wanted to love it so bad. The one thing I will say that I do like about this is the color of it. It, it is an amazing translucent powder. It truly is the only translucent powder that I tried that is really translucent and will keep your under eyes bright, but it just separates and flakes off my skin like you would not believe. Okay, so I want to talk about a few foundations. I actually have three foundations here. So the first one that I have is the Anastasia Stick Foundation and I was so excited. I was anticipating the release of this foundation. Um, I love Anastasia Beverly Hills. I love all of their products. This is the only product that I've tried that I actually haven't liked. $25, full coverage. When you hear it, it's like this is everything I could want in a foundation and more. So many shades, but you know, weirdly enough, they have so many shades and I bought 10 of them, which was like, why did I do that? But anyway, they have so many shades and not a single one matched me, which I just think is like the, the strangest. So I actually wore this in a video one time and it was one of those videos where like I'm not doing my makeup. It might have been like either a talk through video or a three look palette series video. Um, but I had a bunch of comments on that video telling me that my foundation didn't look good. And I was like, guys, I like... <laughs> I don't have any texture on my face right now and this for some reason made it look like I had texture. I was like, where is this coming from? You're like you're making things up. It also separated on my skin really badly. It was really clunky. I don't know what the deal was because everyone raves about this foundation but for me it was just a no-go. It just... Nothing about this foundation worked for me, which I was so sad 
about it. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Liquid Foundation. I love full coverage foundation. For me, when I'm doing my makeup, I'm either no freckles full coverage or I'm no makeup full freckles. There's like no in between for me. And I did kind of like a first impressions on it in one of my makeup tutorials. I used it for the first time in my spring fake freckle tutorial and I chose the wrong color. It was much too dark for me, but then it oxidized so badly that I literally was a little Oompa Loompa in that video. I had so many comments being like, your foundation is too dark. And I was like, oh, trust me, I know. This foundation starts oxidizing almost instantly. On top of that, it is really thick and heavy and I am not a fan of thick, heavy foundations. It felt like I had like another face on top of my face that I could just like peel off. It felt like I was doing the 100 layers of foundation um, challenge. But I actually never get oily in my, like, my face never gets oily throughout the day when I have makeup on. I just don't have oily skin. But this one, I got super oily in my T-zone throughout the day, which I was, like, really concerned about. And it's only ever happened when I was wearing this foundation. I might look a little bit oily now, but it's, like, <laughs> 35 degrees in Australia today, so... It's not oil, it's just sweat. <laughs> Sexy. And the next foundation, another one I wanted to love. Drinking game, take a drink every time I say I wanted to love this product. Um, so this is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. Ooh. Hot potato, hot potato. So the thing with this foundation is it settles into fine lines really, really badly and it separates on my skin terribly. Oh my goodness, I don't even know how to explain to you guys. I filmed a video yesterday and I had to stop filming halfway through because the foundation was separating on me and I looked like a mess. I mean, I don't even know what was happening with this foundation. There was just like big chunks of my face where it like wasn't like there was no foundation because it had separated. It separated all around this area, my nose, all around here. So then I tried to go over it with the Beauty Blender and it just made it way worse. Like it looked patchy. So I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. I think nothing was helping to make this foundation look nice. Works for seemingly every single other person aside from me though. Strangely enough. <laughs> no! No! Okay, another product that everybody loves is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I don't like this one because I just don't like the formula of it. It just doesn't feel good. It's like... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's don't like the way it feels or blends out. I'm really, really bad at describing things and I'm really bad with terminology. I'll probably watch this video back when I'm editing and be like, okay, I know exactly how I wanted to say that, but it's too late now because I'm editing. Okay, now for a palette. This is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. And I, this is like a cult favorite product. I bought all of the Naked palettes because they are so raved about and everyone talks about them and everyone has them. So naturally I bought all three. And oh my gosh, it just has no pigmentation whatsoever. For some reason, I can't seem to make the colors not all blend together in the crease. Like, I mean, you guys see in my normal tutorials, like I can blend it out perfectly well and have the gradient, but these just all seem to blend together. Um, but let me just show you. See this one right here? If it wants to focus that middle bit there that is actually for me trying to scrape the eyeshadow so I could get pigment so that it could be pigmented on my eyelid because I used it in a tutorial and I was like gosh this is so embarrassing that nothing is showing up so I scraped it got all that pigment and it still was not showing up on my eyelids the pigmentation is just it's not there like oh, can you see that that right there is the swatch it's even worse with a brush, just when you have a brush, nothing shows up at all. Okay, so here I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Kit. This is the Ultimate Glow Palette, and I was so excited for this one because the colors in it, the shades, are honestly amazing. These are like the only kind of shades that I would use as a highlighter. Like, I wouldn't use the Sweets or the Moonchild Glow Kits because I just stick to my basics. However, as you can see from this one here, um, that actually happened because I just couldn't get a good swatch of it. I was trying to swatch it and it was coming up really chalky and really 
dusty, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but it was chalky. It was dusty. It wasn't pigmented. So I was like digging my finger in there like, come on, like there has to be some good pigmentation in here. And I ended up doing that so hard that I broke the whole thing. To me, um, I just don't really like the formulation of this one. I don't like how they show up. I feel like they're a little bit chunky, a little bit glittery, a little bit chalky, a little bit dusty. The formulation is just completely different to the other glow clip the other glow kits. I love the formulation of the other glow kits, but this one was just a no-go for me. Okay, the next thing that I have here is also, oh my god, what the hell happened to my hand? Okay, moving on. So the next thing that I have here is the Urban Decay Naked Illuminating Trio. This is what it looks like. It basically comes with these three little baked um, highlighter, blush, blush blush and bronzer so first things first this is an enormous package for these three tiny little domes of product insanely big for what is inside the traveling pack of a blush bronzer and a highlighter and it would take up less room than this massive thing does even the like this the um naked the urban decay flushed palette strip Thing. I mean that has just as much in it as this one does and it's so much smaller and a lot easier to travel with and the product in there you get a lot more product the product is a lot bigger the product takes up the entire packaging but this is like so tiny um not only that but honestly it's a really really glittery palette I wasn't a fan of the naked illuminators because I just wouldn't I feel like it's just a glitter. That's one thing that I don't like about it. Another thing that I don't like about it is I feel like it doesn't show up very well at all. I'll do um, some swatches for you guys. I'm just going to show you how much I'm picking up. And you see that? Like I just feel like it doesn't show up very well. And then the middle one, the highlighter, is a literal... Wait, where is that? That one's over here. You guys see that? It hasn't focused yet. Come on. Okay, so this middle one is like a literal glitter. Like, I would expect it to kind of be that color or maybe a light bronzy highlight color, but it's a literal glitter. It's like a lavender glitter, which is so strange. I would just never use that as a highlight. And then these two just don't show up well on my skin at all. A little bit disappointed in this one, but I kind of expected it because I knew that it would kind of be the same as this one, which I also wasn't a fan of because it's so glittery. This is the Naked Illuminated, and I love the packaging for this one. It's a little bit big, but I like the packaging. And the color just looks so beautiful, doesn't it? Oh my god, okay, look. That is what I got from that swatch. I don't know. Next on the list is the Too Faced Sketch Markers. See, I love the idea of these. I think there are some really, really awesome colors in here. And I'll still probably use some of these colors just because I haven't seen anyone else make them before. So they're super unique and I really love the idea of them. However, I just feel like they bleed really badly into the skin, which they shouldn't be doing. It makes it really hard to get a precise winged liner or any kind of winged or any kind of eyeliner at all when the product is going to bleed into the skin. Very liquidy, bleeds into any fine lines that you have and I just don't really, I find it a little bit hard to work with when it bleeds like that. This one is the Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara. Um, I didn't like this one because I felt like it didn't do anything for my lashes at all. I compare pretty much every mascara I ever use to the Perversion Mascara from Urban Decay because that is like my holy grail of holy grails. Um, this one, it just pretty much made my eyelashes darker, you know what I mean? The Perversion Mascara makes my eyelashes look amazing, they look so long and full and thick, but this one, all it does is put a coat of black on your lashes and that's pretty much it. I just didn't get anything out of this, so I won't be using it again. And last but not least, this is a palette which I actually do enjoy. This palette, I think the pigmentation is great and I do enjoy some of the colours. However, I regret buying it because this is definitely not worth the price point. This is almost 400 Australian dollars and I just feel like it's not worth 
that much money. Um, if I had the chance to go back knowing what I know now, I probably would not purchase this product again. There's only like four matte shades in there, which out of the amount of colours there are, I would definitely expect more matte shades to work with considering I pretty much won't do an eyeshadow look unless I put mattes in my crease so there's not a lot for me to work with in here. I don't really reach for it because of that and I don't know, I pretty much, I don't know, I feel like it's a bit of a waste of money especially considering I go into it every now and then because I'm like oh maybe I want to use this green and I just use like one shade from it and it's just really really annoying. I just don't ever reach for this palette ever because of the fact that I have to use so many different products when I do use it because there's like no matte shades in here at all. Yeah, and then if I use a shimmer shade, I pretty much only use one shimmer shade on the eyelids. So I use mattes from other palettes, other brands, other single eyeshadows from other brands, and then I dip into this one, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll use that one color. And that's all I use. So I just feel like it was a bit of a waste of money and I don't think it's worth the price point. And that is everything. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you do like it and you want to see more disappointing products on maybe every few months, then please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!